Good day, guys. 3D simulation on the R36S is obviously pretty bad. We have a fairly low end SOC and only one gig of RAM. I had a bit of a play around with it last night and I was getting single digit frame rates in pretty much every game. But today I thought we would go through how to set it up just in case you wanted to have a play around yourself. For this, we will be using the latest version of Android for the R36S. So make sure your R36S is compatible with that. You'll also need to have your own 3DS game backups to do this. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 11 PC now, and to get started, we're just gonna download our 3DS emulator. We'll be using the latest build of Azaha Emu, which I believe is based on Lime 3DS. We've just opened up Google Chrome and gone to the Azaha Emu GitHub page, which I will link down in the description below. From here, we wanna scroll down a little bit. Under assets, we wanna download the Android Universal APK. It is only around 46.7 meg, at least at the time of filming. Once that's finished downloading, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. Inside we should have our Azaha Emu APK file we just downloaded, and I also have a few game backups that we'll be trying today. Next we just want to insert the SD card from our R36S. Again, you do need to have Android installed and running on it. We'll copy the emulator APK as well as all of our games. Just select all and control C. Go over to the Easy ROMs partition. Inside here we want to create a new folder. Just right click, new, and folder. I'll call it 3DS. Open that up and we'll paste all of our files in here. Once everything's finished copying, we do want to rename all of our 3DS files to .cci. So we'll start with New Super Mario Bros. 2. Just click on it, delete the extension, which is 3DS, and change it to CCI. Press yes, and we'll do the same with Pokemon Y. You do have to do this since the emulator does not like 3DS extensions. We're almost finished, but there's one more thing we want to do. Since the file manager on Android on the R36S is cut off at the very bottom, it can be hard to see the last few files. So a workaround for that is just to create a new file, just a text document, we'll call it ZZZZ, and we're gonna copy and paste this file a whole bunch. That should do it. I'm just using the ZZZZ text files as padding. We won't actually be using them for anything else. And that's pretty much it. We can safely eject our SD card and put it back into our R36S. We're over on our R36S now, and I've obviously put the SD card back in, but I've also plugged it into a charger. Even though the battery's around 98%, according to Android, the latest versions of Android for the R36S do have an abnormally high low battery threshold. What that means is Android shuts down or fails to boot when the battery is too low, and for some reason, the low battery level is set way too high. So in my tests, I've noticed it fails to boot under around 85% battery. Not only that, if Android is running, and the battery hits around 85%, it will safely shut down as well. So just to avoid any issues, I do have it plugged in. I'll also be using a USB mouse just to set everything up. Although when I was playing around with it last night, I only used the built-in gamepad. The mouse just makes everything a lot easier. With all that said, let's power it on. So this screen here is where it usually shuts down and fails to boot. Again, if that happens to you, it is just because of your battery is deemed to be too low. Okay, so now Android's finished booting. For some reason, it's set to only games. Just click that to go back to all apps. We want to start by opening our files. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there is speaker interference. I'm guessing that's coming from my power bank. It's not a clean power source, so I'll just turn the volume all the way down. And unfortunately, the volume down didn't help. We'll push on anyway. Hopefully, you can't hear it. So in the file manager, click the three lines at the top left. Scroll down, go to Easy ROMs. Open up the 3DS folder that we created. Scroll down a little bit, and we want to install Azaha. Just double click on it. Click continue, install. It shouldn't take too long to install. It's not very big. If you're not using an external USB mouse like I am, just press the right joystick in to enable mouse mode and use the D-pad to control the cursor and R1 to left click. Now it's installed, we wanna open it, just click open. We do have to do a little bit of initial setup. So click get started. We won't grant either of these permissions. Go next. Wanna select the user folder. Again, click the three lines at the very top left. Go to easy ROMs, 3DS and use this folder and click OK. Do the same thing for applications. It looks like it is already in the 3DS folder, so we'll have to click back to Easy ROMs, and then go back into 3DS, and that should bring up the Use This Folder button. We'll click that. Once again, Allow. That's done, click Next, and click Continue. Click Don't Show Again. So our two games did show up. We'll click the three dots at the bottom right to bring up the main menu. I think we'll leave everything as default for the time being. We'll scroll down a little bit, and we'll click Install CIA File. So some games do come as a CIA file, mostly from the eShop. And unfortunately, you can't install them out of the box. They do need to be decrypted first. If we go and try and install Tiny Games, it says installing, see notifications, click the notifications bar at the very top. Fail to install, it must be decrypted first. We won't cover how to decrypt for obvious reasons, but just try and avoid CIA files. Go back to the very top, 
and click settings. We'll go to general. The limit speed option will do absolutely nothing on our R36S since it doesn't even play at full speed, so that's useless. We'll leave all of that, go back, go to system. We'll disable new 3DS mode. That should hopefully give it a little bit more performance, but worst case, it won't make a difference. So there's no harm in disabling it. Obviously, some games only work on a new 3DS like Minecraft, but that won't play at all. If we scroll down a little bit, you can change your username and the amount of play coins you have. Could come in handy, but since 3DS emulation is absolutely awful on this, there's no real point. There's not too much else to change under system. We'll go back, we'll go to graphics. We wanna scroll down a little bit and we wanna disable right eye renderer. This can cause flickering in some games, but it does increase performance. So if you have flickering in your game, obviously disable this. We do wanna enable that though, just to squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. And that's pretty much it in graphics. We'll click back. Now we do have to map a gamepad. Out of the box, nothing will work. So click gamepad. So to map the buttons is pretty straightforward. You click on one of the buttons, for example, A, and press A on the gamepad. It's that easy. One major issue is the B button currently brings up the side menu or the options menu when you're in the game. And if you remap that to in-game B, you will no longer be able to bring up that menu. So I think for this video, I will map B to R3, which is the right joystick in, and I'll just map everything else as it should be. So X to X, Y to Y, select, start. We won't map home. I'll map the circle pad to the left joystick. So just press up on it and then left. Nice and easy. We won't do the C stick. We won't do D-pad axis either, but we will do D-pad button. So up, down, left, and right. I'll also map the triggers, L and R. So with that done, we can go back a whole bunch, click applications on the bottom left, and we'll try our first game. So apparently New Super Mario Bros. 2 is supposed to be a really easy to emulate one. So we'll try that first. It's been about one minute so far, and it's just finished loading. So it's not fast to load but that is the least of our worries. You are gonna sit on this black screen for around three to four minutes while it continues to load in the background. So just be patient, don't press any buttons. Actually really quick while it's loading, I just went back to settings, go to audio, and I will try and disable audio. I guess disable audio stretching and change the volume to zero. Since we can't actually disable audio altogether, I'm not sure if this will improve performance, but hopefully it does do something. We'll go back and resume our game. Okay, so we've got a very small screen at the top right. It is loaded. Click the button a whole bunch, another black screen. If we press B, which is the button that we didn't map, brings up a little menu. We might go landscape screen layout and we'll go side by side screens, just so they're a little bit easier to see. There we go. Now when it finally loads, we should have two roughly even sized screens near the top. We're finally at the menu now, we can use the D-pad. So press A, you can see how slow it is. It is really, really terrible. Go new game, it's a bit of a slideshow. Disabling right eye absolutely sped this up though. Believe it or not, it was even slower before with an enabled. We've got the opening cutscene, how Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach. There's no way to skip this, you do have to sit through it. You can see it is running quite slowly. Some lag spikes as well. And this is just a cutscene, not even in the game yet. You can see there's also some slight stuttering. We're almost in the game now. He's just running through the map. Gone into the first castle. There we go, we can finally move Mario. Pressing right. Go into the level. You can see how slow it is. World 1-1, one, one. see how we go. The level's still loading. There we go, so we're finally in World 1. And you can see how slow it is. There is a massive input delay as well. Almost two seconds. So you're gonna have to press the button well ahead of time. Hitting the coin box made it lag a fair bit. Whoops, I accidentally pressed B. Almost killed our first Goomba. It has locked up a little bit. There we go. It's also worth noting the R36S is getting incredibly hot. This is really pushing it to its limits. Yeah, I would say New Super Mario Bros. 2, absolutely unplayable. This is shocking. We might close out of this one. I'll just press the B button. Go all the way down to the bottom, I think. Close game. And okay. So once again, Mario was supposed to be one of the easier to run ones. But I know a lot of people are going to want to try and play Pokemon on this. Since it is a turn-based RPG, you don't need quick inputs. 
so maybe it won't be too bad with the lag. So I think we'll try Pokemon Y. This does have an incredibly long intro cutscene, so hopefully my R36S doesn't go flat before then. So we're not even at the title screen yet, and it's already incredibly laggy. Not a good sign of things to come. We're almost at the title screen. It's really struggling. It's been about three or four minutes since I've loaded the game. He's thrown the Pokeball and it did lock up briefly. But it looks like we might be almost in the actual game. I think we're almost there. It looks like we're about to get woken up. Hopefully. It's probably been about 15 minutes since I actually started the game. Unfortunately, just as I was about to wake up, it did crash. As soon as I got into the actual game, it went back to this main screen. So it looks like Pokemon Y just isn't playable on the R36S. Overall, while it's technically possible to play 3DS on your R36S, it is far from an enjoyable experience. New Super Mario Bros. 2 was just way too slow, and Pokemon Y crashed before we even got into the actual game. It really heats the R36S up as well, it is quite warm to the touch, and it really, really drains the battery. I would definitely not recommend trying to play 3DS games on your R36S, but if you do end up trying this out, and you're able to get some games somewhat playable, definitely let us know down in the comments below, so other people can try it as well. We might even be able to make up a compatibility list over on the R36S wiki, if we're able to get some games playable. I think for 3DS games, you're still better off running them on a real 2DS or 3DS handheld. Although these are quite expensive these days. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.